Hi and welcome to a video in which we're going to have a look at how we measure distances. Now unfortunately this is a more complicated subject than it really needs to be because in the UK despite the fact that we actually converted to the metric system of measurement way back in the 1970s we'll still hear an awful lot of people using the old measurements. So I'm going to start by looking at which ones we need to learn and which of those we can forget. Let's make a start then by trying to clear up some of the confusion over the different measurements that we here talked about. I'm sure you've heard somebody being asked how tall they are and they've answered something like 5 feet 4 inches or 6 foot 1. Now these measurements are feet and inches and I'm sure you've probably also heard people talk about yards. Now the truth is we aren't supposed to be using these measurements anymore. In truth we still do but these are not going to be units of measurement that we are going to be asked about in an exam. We need to concentrate on the modern metric system. So if you look at the names that are left on the board here you will find we have millimeters, centimeters, meters and kilometers. All these words end in meters. And that's how we identify the units that we're going to learn about. The only exception and the one unit that is still commonly used and that might appear in a question are miles. We still see signposts, maps, speedometers in cars, all in miles. Therefore it still gets used but we don't need to calculate in miles so we are going to leave that one alone as well. Let's concentrate on the ones that we need to learn about. So here we have them listed on the left hand side and I've put them in order of size. Now just to give you an idea, here's a normal plastic ruler you may have on yourself that you can have a look at now. You will see that on the top edge here there are lots of little lines. Now each of those gaps is the smallest of our measurements and those are the millimeters. Now what you see the ruler does it makes a larger line for every 10 millimeters so it goes up 10, 20, 30, 40. If you look at the lower ruler here you can see that the 10 lines up with the 1 here and the 20 lines up with the 2. This is because 10 millimeters is the same as 1 centimeter. So we need 10 millimetres to make up a centimetre. What you can't see from the ruler here is that if we go up past 15 and we go all the way up to 100 centimetres, once we have 100 centimetres we have a metre. Now metres we have to count all the way up to 1000 and that makes a kilometre. So 10 millimetres in a centimetre, 100 centimetres in a metre and 1000 metres in a kilometre. A little bit of a pattern there, 10, 100, 1000 and those are the conversions that you need to learn to change from one measurement to another. Just have a look again at the top of the page here. The same information is written as we had previously. So 10 millimetres is a centimetre, 100 centimetres is a metre. It's just written a different way. And what I've done this time is include the abbreviations. So millimetre we write mm, centimetre cm, metre is just m, and kilometer is km. Now what we are asked to do most commonly in an exam situation is to convert between them. So we need to know how to change millimeters into centimeters, maybe meters into kilometers. And it is these numbers here that help us to do it. So if we are going from millimeters to centimeters we know there are 10 centimeters to meters we know there are a hundred. Now 
The biggest confusion here is deciding whether or not we are going to multiply or divide because it does feel as though we are doing things in the opposite direction. For instance, if we are wanting to convert millimetres into centimetres, we are going from a small unit to a larger unit. But in fact, to make that conversion, we have to divide. Why is that? Well, if you think of a measurement that is 30 millimetres, we know that every 10 millimetres is a centimetre, so 30 millimetres is 3 centimetres. So what have we done? We have divided 30 by 10. So to go from a smaller unit to a larger unit, we divide. So going back to these others, to go from centimetre to metre, we divide by 100. Metre to kilometre, we divide by a thousand. So of course if we're going in the opposite direction, if we have one kilometre, we know that that, if we multiply it by a thousand, is a thousand metres. From going from metres to centimetres, we multiply by a hundred, and centimetres down to millimetres, we multiply by ten. I know that can be confusing, but it is something that we have to get used to. Let's try a couple of questions using these measurements to see whether we can make it a little clearer. Here's our first problem then. We are given a box and we have been told that the box is 30 centimetres wide. We also have a shelf and we know the length of the shelf is 1.5 metres and we are being asked how many boxes we can fit onto the shelf. Now, of course, the initial problem is that the box has been measured in centimetres, whereas the shelf has been measured in metres. In order to work out the answer, what we need to do is convert one of them. Now, there are two ways of doing this. We can convert the centimetres into metres, or we can convert the metres into centimetres, as long as we end up with the same units for both. In this case, if we start dividing the centimetres, we end up with very small decimal numbers, which just makes things more complicated. So the easy way is to convert the metres into centimetres. So let's do that. The shelf is 1.5 metres. We know that to convert metres into centimetres we have to multiply, and we know there are 100 centimetres in a metre. So 1.5 times 100 is 150. So the shelf is 150 centimetres long. In order to work out then how many boxes we can fit on the shelf, we take the length of the shelf and we divide it by the width of one box. 150 divided by 30 is 5. So the answer would be we can fit five boxes on the shelf. And here's our second question. John is planning a trip to the local cinema. Firstly, he drives five kilometers to the petrol station. Then he drives another 3.4 kilometers to the nearest car park. He then has to walk 2000 meters to the cinema. And we are asked how far has he traveled in total? Again, the problem gives us the same challenge as the previous one. We have one measurement and another measurement here in kilometers, but then we also have a distance in meters. So we have to do the conversion. In this case, we could do this quite happily two different ways. Let's have a look at that. Method one. We know that the first measurement is five kilometers. We also know that he then travels another 3.4 kilometers. Now, in order to make them all the same, in this instance, we're going to convert the meters. So we have 2,000 meters. Now, we know there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Therefore, we have to divide by 1,000 to get to kilometers. 2,000 divided by 1,000 is 2. So 
2,000 meters equals two kilometers. Therefore, if we add the two kilometers on there, we find that in fact he has traveled 10.4 kilometers. Now, what other way could we have done it? Well, we could have converted everything to meters. So, the five kilometers, if we multiply that by a thousand, we get 5,000 meters. And the same goes for the 3.4 kilometers. Multiply that by a thousand and we get 3,400 meters. The final distance has already been given to us in meters. Therefore, we would simply add it on. And the answer we get is 10,400 meters. And in fact, these two answers are the same. 10,400 meters. If you divide that by a thousand, you would get 10.4 kilometers. So what makes you decide which way you're going to answer that? Well, sometimes the question might say, give your answers in kilometers or give your answers in meters. That might make a decision for you. Otherwise, it actually doesn't matter because although both answers look different, they are in fact the same. So to summarize, I think the best thing you need to do is remember which of the units you need to learn. Don't forget, they all end in meter and then how to convert them. And the important thing is, if you are converting from a smaller measurement to a larger one, you divide and the opposite way around. I hope that's of use. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel. There's another video you can take a look at there. And if you hit the notifications button as well, you'll get to see any new ones that I produce. Thank you.